Girl Bays, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, I am Andrea Siobhan and I'm currently a specialist in the United States Army. So there seems to be a bit of a trending topic going on right now in the military world on YouTube right now. And I thought I'd chime in because I find it interesting and it plays into everything else that I've been saying. But as usual, of course, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so YouTube alerts you when I post new videos. So I watch a lot of military YouTubers, although I'm in the army myself and I do have my own experiences, I still find it fascinating to see other people's experiences, opinions, and outlooks on the same things that I experience. And I also still have a lot to learn, so I do my research, and that brings me to the point I'm making today. So this YouTuber went on a rant about military YouTubers and how they are lying through the content that they put out basically saying military YouTubers are making the military out to be a fairy tale and as if it's the best job in the world creating a false sense of reality and false expectations for those thinking about enlisting and coming in and what the rest of the military community is saying is to each his own and I agree with the rest of the military community. One person's experience does not determine another person's experience. But that doesn't mean you get to call someone out to be a liar just because they had a different experience than you had. It only means there are two different realities being lived in that is okay. So we all get that part. So I'm just reiterating. Don't build expectations based on someone else's experiences. It's okay to get advice and input because I did the same thing. But at the end of the day, you need to make decisions based off what it is that you want, the research and things that you did. So you do need to do your own research as I stated in so many of my previous videos. Just make sure you're doing what's best for you and not what's best for someone else. I have a lot of brand new soldiers straight out of AIT always asking me, hey, how do you feel about the army? Do you like it? How do you feel about this and that? And I tell them my experiences and I tell them the pros and the cons of my experiences, but I also get them to understand that these are my experiences. So it doesn't mean that you're going to go through the same thing. Just because I hate something does not mean you're going to hate it. Just because I love something does not mean you're going to love it because we're two different people. It's only natural that we're going to have two different realities when it comes to some things. For example, my MOS, 74 Delta or Seaburn. I had so many people asking me um, if they like it, if they should choose it. And Honestly, those aren't questions that I can answer. I can only give you my experiences and my opinions, but at the end of the day, I don't want you to base your decisions off of my experiences. So what I tell people is I don't necessarily care for it. It's not something that I want to do. I want to be on a medical side of things. That's why I decided to reclass, but I have buddies that I graduated with who absolutely love 74 Delta and there are some things about 74 Delta that I find interesting but there's also some things that I don't like like if you're not in a chemical unit it's a good chance you're not going to be doing your job I will never push my personal opinions off as facts and I feel like that's where this youtuber went wrong some people may like a certain MOS some people may hate it some people may like a certain location some people may hate it some people may like a certain unit and some people may hate it and etc. I have so many people tell me about how horrible Korea is and how I'm not going to like it and how she avoids being stationed there and all of this other negative nonsense. But on the other hand, I have people telling me, oh, I loved Korea. It was beautiful. The food was good. The shopping was good. We didn't really do this or we didn't really do that. You know, again, th that's what they lived. But I still want to go. I still want to make my own experiences and I still want to build my own opinions on Korea. Maybe I'll like it, maybe I won't, but at the end of the day, I got to experience it on my own. So to new military personnel or individuals thinking about coming into the army, always keep in mind that there is no right or wrong way to live this military life. You know what I'm saying? If you want to be positive and just you know enjoy yourself and enjoy this experiences which this is the way I recommend then you do that if you want to be negative and complain about everything I mean I don't see a point in that but you can do that as well but don't let someone tell you that your reality is a lie 
and it's false because again it's not it's your reality i mean it can be a lie right you're living it <laughs> also keep in mind there are so many variables and circumstances that can determine these experiences you may have a really good leadership or you may have a really bad leadership you can be miles and hours away from home or you may be just a state away you could be in a unit where you actually get to do your job or you may have to learn something completely different and you're never going to do what you learned at AIT you may be in a unit where you are constantly in a field constantly deploying constantly doing something just busy 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 all the time or you may be in a unit where you are super relaxed and you have a lot of downtime but that's the beauty of the military you get to experience so much but that's also one of the reasons why you have to be able to adapt if you are in a situation that you don't necessarily care for always keep in mind that it's only temporary you only signed a contract for so long just embrace the suck and then move on you can even put a positive spin on it by having a mindset of i'm just getting the best of both worlds the military isn't for everyone and no, it is not always ideal, and I can attest to that, but I feel that's any job, honestly. If you always avoid challenges, you're never gonna know how to deal with it when you have no choice but to face it. Looking for the absolute perfect job setting where you're not gonna have to have any tough conversations, you're not gonna have any type of issues whatsoever, that is looking for a fairy tale. And it's completely unrealistic because let's take jobs out of the equation for a second. You're going to find something you don't like in everything you do. Let's say you're able to buy a giant mansion, your absolute dream home. You got the 10 bathrooms with the 16 bedrooms and the two swimming pools, you have everything there's going to be something about that wonderful house that you don't like. You're gonna have your dream car. There's gonna be something about that car you don't like. So you're never going to find absolute perfection. Crazy enough, I think people come into the military thinking that it's a quick fix to all of their problems and they're going to have complete perfection. It doesn't work that way, sorry. Rule of thumb. It is your life and you should live it the way that makes you happy. And for the military personnel, if you are not having the best experience or if you just had the worst time being in the military, don't ruin it for everyone else by making it seem as if you have nothing but bad to gain because that just isn't the case for most of us. All right, guys, that's all I have. I hope this video wasn't too long. I really try my hardest to make it as short as I possibly can. I did just want to throw my two cents in there on the whole conversation, you know. But yeah, I'm going to see you guys later. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow them stuff for you. For the record, lab on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to waste. For the record. Right. Yeah. For the right.